don't think it's a secret that I really like Silent Hill 2. That game pretty much changed my whole perspective on psychological horror. And good lord, the soundtrack. It is easily my favorite record, and it is so fucking beautiful. Look at this. Oh, fuck. That's why it fucking kills me. That's why it kills me that we got two movies and apparently a third one in production all about the fucking cult story. Which, hey, the cult story is cool and an iconic staple to the series, but no. They took the coward route and they decided to go for the cult story again because they're too afraid to pull off the dog ending. Absolute pussies. And I really can't think of a better story to adapt. It, it literally just makes the most sense. And it easily has some of the best elements out of the entire catalog of games. Now, I've actually never seen either of them, but considering we're getting a new one, I wanted to catch up. My package should actually be here by now. Hold on. I just got a letter. I wonder who it's from. It's from uh, Jeff Bezos or Bozos or whatever. How, the f how do you pronounce his name? I've heard the first one is actually pretty decent, but uh, the second one, let's just say I don't think I need to uh, own that one. I was also in a movie called Silent Hill colon Revelation 3D. <laughs> Anyone a fan? Also, it's on Netflix, which, by the way, fuck America, apparently. Because the first Silent Hill is actually available pretty much everywhere besides the US, but we got stuck with the sequel. Very cool, Netflix. Very cool. So yeah, I actually only got the first one, but this actually looks different from the picture on uh, Amazon. But that's what I get for fucking buying shit on Amazon. And I don't think I'm going to be able to open that without a knife, so. Oh wow, they put Pyramid Head in the fucking, in the middle. Even though he's not even from fucking Silent Hill 1. And the nurses. They put the nurses and the fu- What the fuck? A desperate mother who takes her adopted daughter Sharon to the town of Silent Hill. I thought this was based on... Fucking what's his face? From Silent Hill 1. After a violent crash, Sharon dis- Oh yeah, after a violent crash, Sharon disappears and Rose begins her desperate search to get her back? What? what? Why the- Who the fuck's Sharon? She descends into a fog of smothering ash and into the center of the twisted reality of a town's terrible secret. What is the town's terrible secret? I, I don't remember. Pursued by grotesquely deformed- That's a fucking hard- Grotesquely- That's super hard. Grotesquely deformed creatures and a town's people stuck in permanent purgatory. Rose begins to uncover the truth beyond the ap apocalyptic disaster that burned the town 30 years back. Wow. Dare to step inside the horrific town of Silent Hill where darkness preys on every soul and everything's just out of order apparently. Now I'm not gonna base these too harshly on the source material. I, I, I mean with the fucking, I mean it already seems like it's all over the place and at this point I'm just here for a good story. I'm here for some scares. So I'm gonna do this paranormal activity style which if you didn't see that video you don't really need to. It's not my best work. But in that video I try to watch all of them within a week and give my thoughts on the series as a whole. But there's only two of them so it should only take like a couple days. Day one, I watched Silent Hill, which is often referred to as the best video game movie. After actually watching it uh, and knowing the competition, uh, sure, we can say that. Almost everything I compliment in this movie goes to Team Silent and Akira Yamaoka. Without them and the four games they made, this movie has absolutely nothing. Which is not to undermine the director at all. It's not easy adapting known media onto film, but you also have to acknowledge that this guy is basically working with the best source material and soundtrack anyone could ever ask for. And with what he was given, he did pretty well. Besides mashing all the elements from the other titles into a plot about the first game, this movie more than does the source material justice. I mean, I won't lie, knowing Pyramid Head is a character exclusive to James's story, it's a tad off-putting seeing him based around the events of the first game knowing he has no business being there. Either way, Tallboy and a bunch of other elements from the game are faithfully portrayed on the big screen, which at the end of the day is all I really wanted. I figured this movie's plot and writing would be all over the place, the main thing I was concerned about was how accurately they portrayed the vibe and aesthetic of Silent Hill. And good lord did he succeed at bringing these fictional elements into real life. A lot of these scenes had me admiring the accuracy of set design, monsters, and the other elements from the game. Say what you will about the actual movie, but you can't deny the care put into recreating some of the most memorable elements from these games. And fuck, some of these shots look absolutely beautiful. This is a perfect example of taking advantage of an exclusive element special to Silent Hill in the franchise. Now I wish I could say they put the same amount of effort into the actual script and dialogue, but uh... But apparently they brought on Roger Avery because the director barely knew English and couldn't write dialogue for the language. Now this man has worked with Tarantino twice. 
and has the audacity to write some of the worst decision making for almost the entire cast. This entire fucking movie would have been avoided if Sybil wasn't a garbage cop who suspects everyone with a kid is trying to kill them. And Rose wouldn't have crashed if she wasn't speeding like a maniac because Sybil pulled her over. Now I don't know if you fellas know this, but if a cop has nothing on you, speeding away when they pull you over gives them a reason to suspect something. Like what was Sybil gonna say when she walked up to the window, I think this girl who's been calling you mommy isn't your daughter. Yeah okay, going 100 with your kid in the car sounds like the only option. Now this movie was written with no males in the script, but the big boys over at the studio wanted more boring dicks on the screen, so we got Sean Bean dicking around in Silent Hill for him to quite literally accomplish nothing. If he wasn't in this movie, literally nothing besides the fucking pace of the movie would have changed. Like sure, make Sybil and Rose dumb bitches, whatever, but don't add useless fucking characters that add nothing besides slowing down the fucking pace of the movie. Now bear with me as I try to explain the plot of this movie. Same Silent Hill shenanigans, the town lures in a mother and daughter, Rose and Sharon, aka Heather, but not really. And despite Christopher, aka Harry, but not really, telling Rose to fuck off Silent Hill, she goes anyway while Sybil follows. And soon after entering Silent Hill, she crashes, but not really, and when she wakes up, her daughter is gone. She then meets up with Sybil, who puts her in handcuffs despite being told her fucking child is missing, and considering how concerned she was a minute ago, you'd think she'd want to help Rose find her. And everything after is just basically what you do in these games, run around the town, finding new monsters and clues on why you're there. Despite it being pretty boring, I will say it's accurate to how most of these games play. Now I will say how fucking annoying it is how many times Rose is about to die just for the nightmare to go away, which is what they call the other world, which is basically purgatory. And I don't really want to spend the rest of this video picking apart this movie, there are plenty of other people who've probably done it better than I could. Yeah, this movie has a fuck ton of flaws, but I really enjoyed it going in with the mindset of it being a flawed movie, and knowing I was just watching it for the fan service of the soundtrack and aesthetic. I mean, watching Pyramid Head rip off someone's fucking skin off their body was a hoot and a half, I'll tell you what. And watching scenes like Rose grab something out of a mangled man's mouth is oddly fitting for the series. It didn't make sense for James to jump down a thousand fucking holes in Silent Hill 2, but I went along with it and loved that section of the game. Silent Hill is known for its multiple endings and dark outcomes, so an ending where the cult gets fucking massacred by Alessa, who is the dark side of Sharon, where the two finally meet and become one again, and when they get home it's revealed that they are still stuck in the other world due to Alessa now being one with Sharon. So she basically trapped them so she can have her all to herself while Sean Bean is probably going insane alone. It's definitely a bittersweet ending which is known for the series at this point and leaves a lot of possibilities for the future of the series. Overall, despite the many things going against it, I really like this movie and what it does with the elements it has. I can only imagine it's all downhill from here though. Day 2 I watched Silent Hill Revelations 3D. I've mentioned this before in my Paranormal Activity video, but the 3D era in Hollywood was a rough one to say the least. And I don't really think I have to argue that, mostly everyone agrees that 3D marketed movies were a gross fad from the early 2010s that we should all forget about. But unfortunately this movie has more for me to bitch about, and I'm not even gonna lie, I find zero amusement judging these movies as films. Like do you guys really need a lengthy explanation on why this movie's bad? Most of it just boils down to terrible writing, plot holes, lazy character writing, and choices. Now I actually own Silent Hill 3, even though I've yet to play it, I guess I just don't want to say goodbye to this series yet, even though I've been judging these movies as their own. I'm sure if I would actually played Silent Hill 3 before watching this I would have disliked it even more. It's pretty clear throughout this movie that they had no idea what they were doing. The fact that Sean Bean is one of the main characters despite being a last minute addition to the first movie to please the studio just kind of shows that maybe picking up a dead franchise 6 years after the movie without the director who made that movie possible and work wasn't the best move. It just seems like Konami saw the 3D boom in Hollywood and wanted to cash in on it with the only movie title they had. Like I don't see why Gans would have turned down a sequel to a movie he worked so hard on to even be made, unless he didn't agree with the direction the studio was going with it being a 3D mess and all. Like the man is working on a third movie as I speak, obviously he's still interested in the series, it just seems very unlikely that he would skip out on an opportunity to make a sequel unless he didn't agree with the studio demands. Now bear with me once again as I try to explain the plot of this movie, a few years after the events of the first movie it's revealed through a weird mirror message that Rose is still stuck in Silent Hill. And Sharon was the only one to come back with her memory of the first movie completely gone, including the writers apparently. And now her and Chris are on the run for murdering a member of the cult trying to take Sharon back to Silent Hill, forcing them to have to change their names and locations multiple times. But for this movie we are left with Harry and Heather, the protagonists of the first and third game. And on her 18th birthday her father is kidnapped by the cult, leaving her to find out the truth about who she really is and why the cult wants her to come back to Silent Hill. Now like I said I could pick apart this movie till I fucking die, but I think we kind of get the point on what makes these movies bad. Almost every decision made in these movies are noticeably lazy making it hard to even take the writing or plot serious. <laughs> the love interest in the movie doesn't want Heather to go after her father in Silent Hill just for him to tell her exactly what to do when she gets there literally seconds after telling her not to go. No, I think we're really close and I don't think you should go. 
What? I think your dad's right. I don't think you should go to Silent Hill. I need to find him. You read his notebooks. He wants you to run. Vincent! No, listen to me. The order, they want you. What about my dad? Is he still alive? Yes, but not for long. My mother, Claudia, won't keep him alive after she has what she wants. Where is he? In the sanctuary beneath the town. Wait, Heather, stop! No! You need this. You have to find the other half. It's the only way you'll be able to save your dad. My grandfather has it. The one in the asylum. Yes. Fellas, I really hate to be the ones that break it to you, but that's just not how consistent character writing works. There's so much about this movie that not only makes it a bad adaptation and sequel, but also just a shitty film in general. And yeah, in that regard, this is an awful dumpster fire. But like I said about the first one, if you go into this movie with low expectations for a traditional film and just for the fan service, you'll probably enjoy yourself and might even like it for what it is. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, fellas, I was absolutely stoned to the bone my first watch. Moonrocks was definitely not the move when reviewing this movie. So I had to rewatch it to fully absorb it and even remember the movie and look man i have really really bad adhd which already fucking cripples my attention span so sitting through an hour and a half of heather learning everything we already knew from the first movie it, it was not easy for me especially since this is essentially the same exact fucking movie with the same cold i got absolutely rolled by Alyssa in the first movie like how are you gonna kill the main threat of your series just to bring him back in a sequel with no explanation oh easy apparently just how like they ignored everything else with no explanation like apparently in this movie Alyssa and heather didn't fuse at the end of the first movie but rose is still stuck in silent hill who the fuck is calling me they're literally picking and choosing plot points from the first movie to work off of or just completely ignore with zero explanation it's like they assume no one watched the first one so they could just do whatever the fuck they wanted in this movie yet they treat it like it's a direct sequel like make up your fucking mind konami it's either a sequel or it's not overall as a film this is fucking awful a true film writing guide on what not to do when writing a cohesive entertaining story and as a sequel to a movie completely relying on its source material it's not even that enjoyable <laughs> like with some moon rocks like you might find some enjoyment out of this movie but overall it's a slow boring mess that retells everything we already knew from the first movie what made the first movie work was how faithful games was to the series and his goal to best accurately portray silent hill onto film where this just fucking feels like a lazy attempt to cash in on the 3d boom in halloween Just like my paranormal activity video, that entire goal of that video was to get a better understanding of the franchise. And if I ever do this shit again, which I hope, I really hope I don't, uh, that that will also be the reason why I do, why I make these videos. But considering we're getting a new movie from Games himself, I wanted I wanted to you know pitch an idea. Even though Konami is the king of disappointments after all, and after how dirty they did Kojima, I don't expect anything but fucking disappointment from them anymore, okay? So, I've heard rumors that this new movie is going to take place with the cult again. Now, I could be getting jebated for all I know, but if these rumors are true, I'm telling you now, quite literally, nobody gives a fuck about these stupid fucking jabronis. I'm telling you, Konami, a movie on Silent Hill 2 is the fucking move. The fact that you guys already made two movies without James' story is quite honestly fucking criminal. The entire Lakeview Hotel section of the game has so much potential on film. And the way all the information in the game is revealed is almost perfect for an adaptation. Keep the intro the same as the game, including Mary's narration, and end it with Mary's letter despite which ending you choose, and so HELP ME GOD, Konami! Keep everyone's fucking story the same. Don't even add Eddie, I don't even give a fuck. But do not change his or anyone else's character. I want nothing more for this movie to succeed financially and critically. And with the entire plot and characters from the second game, you literally can't lose. If these movies do well, it actually might wake up Konami to actually acknowledge the fucking series and do something with it. It still baffles me to this day that these guys had Del Toro, Junji, Kojima, all working on the most anticipated horror game ever and just casually swiped it under the rug like they didn't just make the best playable teaser ever. The the sheer disrespect on the whole situation is still very hurtful and yet, yet very impressive at the same time. And even even though the fans have been disappointed time and time again, they're still louder and more active than ever, hoping one day Konami will take us there again someday.